Hello everyone, Wojtek here with the second part of my forest ground material breakdown. This time I will talk about creating plants and adding color and roughness to texture. Okay, so later I created a plant, so it looks like this with uh, overlay of the old creations. So this is a very similar process to this one with pebbles. Uh, basically I took the input, I don't tapped it to get the bigger shapes and use a, an occlusion, I inverted this occlusion and use it uh, as a, as an input to mask in a tiler, so this is a mask where the plants should be placed and this is the mask of its rotation map and scale map. So that they will be a little bit smaller further away from the rocks not sure if it's a correct way of doing this but you know uh, as for the nature assets uh, I created them separately in this in this graph so let me show you this well it's not as tidy <laughs> as the previous ones so first of all I created this basic shape uh, the slave one uh, mainly I made it with uh, uh, 2D uh, SDF functions so I use this SD Vesica and I just uh, SD show it uh, and then I made some modification with a really cool new tonality node so that you can scale your uh, Simple shapes with uh, uh, with a line spline. So we have shape like this. Uh, I added a tone step to achieve this full shape of the leaf, and also mm, to to do get the stem, I use uh, other values of a tone step node. And uh, later, I just don't value it. <coughs> And uh, <clears throat> I use as uh, as an input uh, this slope blur with itself to get a little bit sharper edge, <clears throat> and I use a directional warp uh, with those values and this uh, really vertical value noise. Uh, you can see the parameters uh, scale one and at X and 24 at Y with five iterations. So I achieved this shape uh, with this angle. Uh, you can tweak the angle and uh, other values. So it's like, uh, you know, uh, uh, leafy uh, shapes. And I again directional warp it to achieve some distortion. And actually, I also directional warp with the similar values to the original leaf, and uh, yeah, I blended it together in a different mode, so I have the result on the screen right now. So we have our leaf. As for the stem, it was just transformed. Uh, okay, so this is the stem. Yeah, so this is this one. I use a circle to modify its shape. By translating it in a in a x uh, axis, and then I directional warp it a little bit to get this natural shape, and it's blended here. Uh, or maybe it's not blended; it's output to the other graph. Yeah, so we have these two basic shapes right now, and uh, I just use a circular splatter with a warp. Then I just used a circle as a base to darken the center so that the outer uh, <clears throat> outer worlds of uh, image uh, are a bit lighter and uh, it means in the height map that's a bit higher. And I uh, used a similar technique uh, with a circle splatter to achieve those two. I also used a circle with a blend to darken them and scale them up. And then I blended original uh, 
grass blades with this one and this one is without blades grass uh, and we have this uh, tile 2x2 two two node and yeah this is the input of uh, our tiler it's a buffered result and it looks like this other than that there are only shutter uh, brightness as contrast uh, and a little bit of anti-aliasing so if you set up this value a little bit harder than one then this will be anti-aliasing result yeah that's the look right now and I am using a math node to, to add it on top of our original uh, texture so that uh, it's not blended uh, it's just a sum of those uh, two images so you can see right now result yeah, and that's about plants I think that's all about uh, actually a height map creation and uh, let's talk about uh, coloring or albedo okay so let's start uh, talking about albedo it's a very important uh, element of every 3D texture uh, so I started with a dirt and actually I took uh, the original height map for dirt with those strange shapes for our rocks and uh, I created uh, something like this basically what I done is I took the original height map and uh, I warped noise by it so I used this parallel noise warped by itself to create those clamps and buffered it for the performance and then I warped this noise by our original height map so we have something like this I color sampled with a reference uh, I don't have reference loaded right now but you can color sample by dragging your left uh, mouse button and you can place those um, colorized nodes in your graph so this is the graph I, um, I resulted with and yeah uh, then I created those small the high frequency noise that it's supposed to simulate very small small pebbles and stuff like that uh, and I colorize it like this so the alpha is actually uh, very low at the beginning and it increase uh, with, <coughs> with a grayscale and I placed it on the on top on the, our height map colored height map so color dirt this is not a height map this is albedo and then I blend everything with a custom color to give it a tint configurable tint so this is the color which I'm using right now okay so after coloring the dirt okay so dirt is here and uh, the next step was to colorize stones so this is looking like this uh, there is a little bit of artifacting uh, you can see right now but actually this is a blended with uh, mm, this is this opacity map so we don't really care okay so mm, to create the stone colors I firstly got the output result of those stones so I use this buffer with this relay nodes and they go here and there is a second input this is the our dirt color okay so, and so how did my rocks it's a pretty simple uh, so here we have our rocks I'm using a ton step to fill and uh, with a fill to color uh, and just sample some rocks on the image so those are the colors I decided to use from our for my rocks and this fill to color so to colorize them and then I adjusted colors so they are not so bright and saturated or maybe <coughs> they are but they are less br less brighter and then um, I used 
this one and this is uh, actually just our original dirt colorized and blended with those stone steps based on our uh, dirt color. Uh, for a little bit of variation <clears throat> I blended, uh, I created second variation of it with uh, adjusted uh, colors and blended it together with itself uh, by, with using this mask uh, it's a pearly noise and I did it again with a different mask uh, this mask this time is uh, mask base of smooth curvature so I use smooth curvature I use a tone step to get some highlights and blended uh, the second a little bit greener uh, <laughs> variation of those rocks and that's the final result you can see uh, so um, after this big rocks uh, it was time to Okay, so they are blended with our um, dirt, and this time um, it's time for a pebbles. So you can see right now it looks a little bit strange, but <laughs> when we blend them together, um, it looks uh, a little bit better. Yeah. So how does clamp rocks are were colorized? This is a variation for big rocks, uh, the same is for a medium size and small size. So yeah, mm, this is a very simple graph. What I am using is a filter random gray and a brightness contrast uh, correction and colorize. And again I am using adjust, adjust HV. Uh, to create some variation in some places using this cellular noise and doing something like this so we have a clump medium and clump small uh, we are right now achieving something like this so we have all our frogs on the albedo texture and uh, the last thing <coughs> left is actually a um, colorization of plants so this is it this is the result and how I did it uh, so first of all I started with a simple colorize uh, of the input original input uh, here, so you can see the grass and leaves, uh, and I use a ton step on the second value uh, to get um, a mask of our plants. So yeah, um, here we have our previous textures, and here we have a mask from our grass. And then I adjusted AHV and uh, use the pearly noise uh, to <clears throat> create a little bit of variation in the colors so it looks like this and you can see a little bit them right now yeah and this is a uh, blend with uh, original texture so here we have our original texture uh, and to achieve a little bit uh, effect of lifting those plants uh, I use this simple technique so I took original plants in a grayscale uh, values I inverted them and use a gas and blur and then I blended them together again with, um, with an original uh, mask so that I have those black outlines around my white uh, white plants and white background and simply by using a multiply node I can achieve this darken regions 
um, around my plants. Uh, it really gives this uh, illusion of hate to them. And uh, I think that's all um, for the albedo. Uh, yeah, I just soft lighten uh, it with some smooth curvature to, to get this a little bit of pop-up again for all the elements on our uh, map and the uh, albedo is finished okay so the last uh, thing to do is a roughness map I think so let's see how does it look so basically I took the output of plants um, this one so the only the plants without the background and uh, each of the pebbles and also original rocks and basic based on that I created my roughness map so this three on top this is the plants and other are the, the rocks so um, with the rocks I just blend them together in the lighten mode so you have all the rocks in the same screen I invert it and blend it with a noise this value noise uh, so I have a little bit more variation and uh, I just use a buffer and brightness contrast so you can't see much actually on the screen right now but uh, the white means uh, a lot of roughness and uh, the, the, the darker the pixel the more sh shine there will be uh, on the surface. So for plants I use a similar technique I also blend it with a little bit of noise, I inverted it and color corrected with a brightness contrast node and everything is blended with darken mode and we have our Roughness, uh, roughness detail map. It's a very simple map and it could be a little bit more complex uh, but it works uh, okay for me. Okay so that's all for this overview of my material made in uh, Material Maker. There will be actually an update very soon so check it out and try it for yourself. Uh, there is a lot of new cool stuff like uh, painting your models and other performance improvements. So that's all for this video. I hope you like it. Uh, if you have any questions or suggestions, please leave a comment below and see you on the next one.